Um, when we come to taking out a lesion, um, a simple elliptical um, excision, the usual rule is that we want to have a three to one excision. That's three times the length to the width of the excision. Um, here we have uh, what is purporting to be a uh, nevus and we would want to be taking this out with a two millimeter margin. So that's there. If we look at that, that's about just under 1.5 millimeters. So in fact that would be almost um, uh, 4.5, just under that, about 4.2 uh, centimeters in length. And in order to mark that up, 4.22 there gives you an idea of the size of the correct ellipse. There are some exceptions to this rule, but in general, a 3 to 1 excision is the perfect size in order to be able to close a wound with the minimum of tension. So that's a 3 to 1 excision. When it comes to excising an ellipse, remember the rule of 90 degrees. We want to have the scalpel at 90 degrees to the skin. The temptation is if you're operating like this, you will tend to operate either that way if you're right-handed or that way if you're left-handed. But what we want is to operate at 90 degrees. We start at the apex, heading around the pre-marked ellipse that we want to excise. Note that we're cutting around the outside of the marked area. There is always a temptation to cut on the inside, which will then reduce the margin to your lesion. So with both of these, we've cut so far. Then we turn the scalpel round and come back in the opposite direction to join up with our incision line. The reason we do this is to try and avoid the temptation to cut over like that so-called fishtail. Uh, once you have cut your ellipse it's important to be able to cut down to the fat layer again by keeping the scalpel at 90 degrees to the skin. There's a temptation to keep on cutting like this and you end up with a so-called boat hull excision. And the difficulty there is you won't bring the edges together. So we've gone for a 90 degree cut down to the fat and then it's a question of gently easing the specimen off from the base and note how always cutting into the center and not cutting out towards the edge and in this way avoiding any damage to the edge of the wound. This is where a skin hook can be so useful. And then to remove your specimen and that's going to go off for histology. Once you've completed your excision, it is sensible to undermine the edges in order to be able to bring the uh, stitched edges closer together with less tension. Exceptions to this may be in the face or if you have a patient on an anticoagulant where you're worried that this is likely to cause excessive bleeding. You'll note that this is done as blunt dissection. As soon as you feel that you've undermined the area well enough, if this is going to be closed entirely by superficial sutures, we would be using something like this. This is proline or ethylon. And the idea here is to be able to insert the needle at 90 degrees down to the depth through the dermis that you require and then for the second, the other side to be 
exited again at 90 degrees. So in at 90 degrees, out at 90 degrees. As far as tying is concerned, a lot of people tend to do this down here and they end up with a great awkwardness. Instead, tie your knot some distance from the skin and then when you come to draw this together, instead of pulling in that way, allow the suture to be the knot to be brought down to the skin in this way. So here you have the skin brought together and then if you bring this edge across and the other suture held end, uh, the needle held end the other way, you have it locked. A second knot in the opposite direction and then the original direction. You now have a perfectly tied first suture. One of the most important things in applying the uh, needle holder to the needle is to ensure that you apply it in the correct location. This section of the needle, of this curved needle, is hollow. It's where the suture is attached. If you attach your needle holder anywhere along here, you're almost guaranteed to bend the needle. The maximum you should ever do is at the very base of that area about there. Note that it's applied at 90 degrees to the needle holder and at the very tip of the needle holder. That way you're not crushing it. In addition, you've only clicked one of the um, settings on the ratchet on your needle holder. As far as inserting the needle is concerned for your second suture, the best estimate is to look at the width across here and rather equal that in terms of your next um, suture point. So again, inserting as we did before at 90 degrees, taking the needle out and then reinserting coming out at 90 degrees. Once again, three turns away from the wound and then draw the skin together requiring very little tension across, lock, one turn opposite direction, one turn original direction, second suture completed. Earlier I showed how to insert the sutures starting at one apex and working your way along. A lot of hospital wounds are closed by starting in the centre and then working out. That's fine if all you have is a cut in the skin, a surgical cut in the skin. However, we have taken tissue away. And therefore, the area with the greatest tension is here in the centre. And if we try to follow that approach, which is not the correct approach for skin surgery to close an ellipse, you'll find that the amount of tension required to bring this together is much more likely to cause the stitch to break. Which is why we always start at one apex and work our way along.